Hello and welcome to another episode in the Cancelled Game series. I'm Pete AK on a Retro Tip and this is one I'm really excited about making, it's some unreleased arcade games. Now there are a great many examples of cancelled arcade games but surprisingly few that made it far enough to produce anything worth showing. Join me as I take a look at 10 of them. Spellsinger, full name Spellsinger and the Lost Child, was a side-scrolling beat-em-up being developed by Belgian studio Art & Magic. Development began in 92, and they were clearly hoping to cash in on the success of other fantasy arcade beat-em-ups of the time, like Sega's Golden Axe. Sadly, the source code and the majority of the assets have been lost, but even from this poor quality preview we can see that it has a really striking art style resembling cartoony 2D sprites reminiscent of 80s animated films. The sprites are 2D but can move in 3D. The scenery looks incredible with multi-layered parallax scrolling creating an impressive sense of depth to the backgrounds. There's also a lot going on in the scenery with the fire and water animations looking particularly good. The only information available about the game is from the intro to the preview in which Art & Magic outlines some of the details. All it says regarding the plot is that you'll travel through fantastic and dangerous lands on a quest to save Tanner, the lost child. The game would feature two playable characters, presumably the wizard and warrior that we see in the gameplay footage. It would have five worlds to explore and it would have quote, cartoon-like animations, amazing 3D effects, and powerful sound effects. We know at least some of these claims are true, as the cartoony style and beautiful backdrop still look stunning even now. This is a game I would definitely have liked to play, as I'm a huge side-scrolling beat-em-up fan, and always favour this kind of 2D art style over 3D or realism, as it just ages so much better. The preview video says copyright 1995, so by this time Spellsinger had been in development for three years. According to the game's art director Frank Sauer, who did artwork for several games including Psygnosis published Agony on the Amiga, the development process suffered several delays, partly due to their attentions being diverted to other smaller projects to keep money coming in. The end result was that by the time Spellsinger's preview was released, it had missed its window and was no longer relevant. For this reason and after the unforeseen delays, Art & Magic cancelled the game. Hammer Away is a vertical scrolling shooter developed by Santos and Sega from 90 to 91. You pilot a military helicopter which has machine guns and missiles and bombs which kill all enemies on screen, a typical vertical shooter setup really. Even though it was slated for a 91 release, the prototype was only discovered relatively recently in 2014, when a group of shoot 'em up fans in Portugal found Hammer Away on a System 18 arcade board in a job lot of old PCBs. They dumped the ROM, and the guys at Main very quickly got it running on emulation so you can download and play it now. The prototype has five stages and has a checkpoint feature so you'll only go back to your most recent one if you die. The music's rumoured to have been composed by Hirofumi Murasaki, who worked on Shinobi 3 among others. I have absolutely no idea why this one was cancelled, although it doesn't seem to revolutionise the genre in any way, Hammer Away looks fantastic for 1991 and has very fluid gameplay and animations, so it's a shame that this Sega shooter never made it to the arcades. City Diver was a 3D shooter from Taito, being developed in 94 and 95. Sadly, the only footage we have is this early demo footage, but there was at one point a playable version. The game would support up to four players in a city setting, made from a mixture of rendered images and 3D polygons. The interesting thing about City Diver is it would have featured a pseudo 3D effect without the need for glasses. This would be achieved using an LCD projector and a lenticular lens, developed by Sanyo and two collaborating companies, which would split the screen into left and right images, thus providing the 3D effect and sense of depth perception without the use of 3D glasses. 
City Diver would have had two game modes, a single player mission mode and a two player battle mode, the latter being achieved through the linking of two arcade cabs. Its unveiling was initially planned for September 95 at the Jammer Show, but for some reason the game never saw release. Starblade Operation Blue Planet was a sequel to Starblade from Namco, an on-rail shooter released in arcades in 91 and a few years later saw ports on the Mega CD, 3DO and PlayStation. It would be housed in this overly elaborate and very expensive looking arcade cabinet called ORBS or Orbs, which stood for Over Reality Booster System. This specialised cab had a domed projector screen, a retractable seat and featured a lens that projected the images 180 degrees around the player, creating a much more immersive arcade experience. Operation Blue Planet came some time after the 91 original and was shown at an expo in Japan in 2001, but after initial testing the project was scrapped along with the costly ORBS cabinet. I never played the original Starblade at the arcade, but did rather enjoy it on the Mega CD. This sequel looks fantastic, and I can imagine that it would have been quite the experience when you were enveloped by that 180 degree screen. If you owned a home computer or console in the 90s, chances are that you played Lemmings. Developed by DMA Design, who famously became Rockstar North, and published by Sugnosis in 91, Lemmings started out on the Amiga before being ported to almost everything. In fact, it's one of the most ported games of all time, and for good reason, it's simple but addictive gameplay. One platform that the Lemmings franchise didn't grace was the arcades, and one could argue that its gameplay wouldn't translate well to an arcade game. But that's not to say it wasn't considered, as an arcade version was developed to some extent, at least to a playable form which is what you're seeing here. This is the arcade prototype version running on PC, a prototype which wasn't discovered for many years. Rumour has it that the Lemmings arcade cab would have featured a trackball and buttons, similar to cabs like Marble Madness. Probably for the best this wasn't ported to arcades in all honesty, but interesting nonetheless. Another Sega game here, Albergus was a Laserdisc game based on the early 80s anime TV series Lightspeed Electroid Albergus. The story surrounded three high schoolers who designed robots for a competition. After an evil alien race take a fancy to Earth, a professor, also the father of one of the students, modifies the three robots to join to form one super robot Power Rangers style. This giant robot is called Albergus and wields a giant plasma sword. The game was in development at Sega in 85 and would have been a laserdisc game similar to Dragon's Lair in which you test your reaction and memory skills by responding to commands. It would have featured branching paths, but other than that very little is actually known about the game. No prototype PCBs are known to exist, only this laserdisc footage which is essentially just video. Judge Dredd was a side-scrolling beat-em-up developed in 1992, obviously based on the comic book series of the same name. If you haven't immediately guessed from the footage, it was developed by Midway and ran on the same hardware as Mortal Kombat 2. The visual resemblance is clear with its digitised graphics and a lot of Judge Dredd's moves are identical to those of the Mortal Kombat fighters. Technically, it wasn't really a side-scrolling beat-em-up, of the three stages completed in development, only the first is a beat-em-up, the second is more of an action platformer, and the third is sort of a survival mode called Block War, during which you have to survive waves of enemies. After each of these three prototype levels there's a bonus stage. These are similar to the Knife Throne bonus stage in Shinobi, or I suppose more accurately the shooting range minigame in Robocop on the Amiga. Midway bought the rights to Judge Dredd in 1990 after it was announced that a film would be going into production. They planned to couple the well-known license with the gameplay of popular arcade beat-em-ups and were reportedly heavily influenced by Konami's brawlers like Turtles and The Simpsons and even had a Turtles cab in the office during Judge Dredd's development. 
the cabinet would have featured three player co-op and four test cabs were produced and sent out for testing in Chicago but the results weren't great. The feeling was that side scrollers had fallen out of favour amongst arcade goers due to the explosion in popularity of versus fighters after Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat successes. Although it looks pretty naff nowadays, I can see people going nuts for this back in the early 90s. The prototype's ROM was dumped online a few years back, so you can play the three levels and the bonus stages on main, and there's even a secret boss rush level as well. Capcom Fighting All Stars was to be a 3D fighter heading to arcades and the PlayStation 2. It was a crossover game of sorts, which Capcom does better than anyone, and would feature several characters from their franchises. Capcom fighters had been given the 3D treatment before this of course with the Street Fighter EX series. Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha is one of my favourite PlayStation games and I always say that although it's 3D, for all intents and purposes it's still a 2D fighter and certainly plays like one. It's a great game once you get to grips with it and Capcom's rival schools games prove that this type of 3D fighter can be jolly good fun. I know that many didn't like seeing Street Fighter in 3D so it was disadvantaged from the get go and I think this played a part in the cancellation of Capcom fighting all stars. If this official trailer is anything to go by I think it looks awesome personally it would definitely be something I would have picked up for my PS2 back in the day. The full roster was Ryu, Chun-Li, Akuma, Alex and Charlie from Street Fighter, Mike Hager and Poison from Final Fight. Batsu and Akira from Rival Schools, Strider from Strider, and Dimitri from Darkstalkers. Plus, it would have had four brand new characters, DD the God of Thunder, Rook the Fallen Angel, Death, and Ingrid the Eternal Goddess. The latter, Ingrid, actually made it into a Capcom fighting game in the end with the release of Capcom Fighting Jam, or Capcom Fighting Evolution in North America in 2004. I have this one on PlayStation 2 and it's another great Capcom crossover fighter and sort of a 2D version of Capcom fighting all stars. Later Ingrid also appeared in Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max on the PSP. It's a pity that Capcom fighting all stars was never released, it had a couple of interesting gameplay mechanics which Capcom haven't ever used, including Mortal Kombat like finishing moves. Tattoo Assassins was developed in 1994, not by Midway as you might have guessed, but by Data East. The fighters each have magical tattoos, hence the name, which imbue them with powers. The resemblance to Mortal Kombat goes way beyond mere coincidence, as Data East developed this to specifically be their version of Mortal Kombat. Not only do the digitised graphics, characters, colours and special moves look like Mortal Kombat, but it essentially looks like a reskinned version of Mortal Kombat is so similar. It seems to lean towards the farcical more than the Mortal Kombat series though, with some hilarious character names like the biker Truck Davis, Cyborg Mercenary AC Current, Irish rock star Derek O'Toole, and stripper Hannah Hart. Tattoo Assassins boasted over 2,000 finishing moves in a wide variety of styles, including nudity and animal finishers, the latter of which actually predated Mortal Kombat's animalities. There were some comical finishing moves in the mix too, like explosive diarrhea. Back to the Future screenwriter Bob Gale led the development team to one finisher sees a DeLorean being dropped onto the opponent in an homage to the films. It seems to have suffered a fair few setbacks during development which contributed to its cancellation, perhaps the most serious of which being that its prototype cabinets didn't test well in arcades. Plus, other similar arcade fighters like Primal Rage and Killer Instinct were killing it at the arcades at the time, so Data East weren't too confident about Tattoo Assassin's ability to compete. Over 20 cabs were rumoured to have been built for a show in 94, and although most were destroyed, there are at least two still out there. The game was almost entirely finished by the time it was scrapped, so you can download the ROM and play it on MAME should you wish to, although it does have a few glitches and unpolished elements. I won't be shedding any tears over the cancellation of Tattoo Assassins, as to me it looks very clunky and sluggish, resulting in it not having that sense of pace and rhythm that I look for in a versus fighter. 
Sure, the early Mortal Kombat games were a fun novelty, but give me the faster paced Capcom fighters any day. Still, definitely an interesting one for Mortal Kombat fans to try out. Chimera Beast was a planned horizontal shooter developed by CP Brain, which would have been released by Jaleco in 1993. Traditionally in Greek mythology, a chimera is a creature with a goat's body, lion's head and snake's tail. This monstrosity looks more like a scorpion fetus with the head of an alligator and a body made from frog spawn. Well, sometimes, as its appearance changes as the game progresses. This hideous beast is an eater, one of many creatures on this distant Earth-like planet which can take on the characteristics of other creatures by eating them. Enemy creatures include flying squirrels, moles and numerous fish and shellfish. This makes for an interesting take on the traditional power-up system, so you can upgrade to a hard shell if you eat a crab-like animal, or gain a stinging tail, pincers, horns or projectiles. You can even obtain cancer bombs, which is pretty fucking dark. And there are various combinations of these abilities, which not only makes for a mental looking creature, but some interesting attack and defense strategies. Nice idea. Rather than the common one hit deaths of many shoot 'em ups, Chimera Beast gives you a health bar which depletes when hit, but also replenishes when you eat other creatures. Bosses come in the form of huge beasts that are equally as ugly as your creature and follow the attack the weak points format of many a scrolling shooter. All in all it doesn't look like a bad game at all and certainly has some interesting gameplay concepts. Chimera Beast never made it past the prototype stage, perhaps because it was just a little bit too weird. So those were 10 of the many unreleased arcade games, let me know in the comments what you think of them, I would actually love to do a follow up to this one if I can find some more interesting cancelled arcade games, so if you know of any that reached the prototype stage let me know, and as always, thanks for watching. You can catch the other episodes in my cancelled game series in this playlist.